Hello. I had a lovely email this week from Simon Frisby, one of the co-founders of Etcher, offering to send me some Etcher products to try out, which I was delighted about as I've got one Etcher everyday sketchbook, the cold pressed one, which I really like. So I was definitely keen to try out some other Etcher products. So the parcel from them came via Jackson's Art. And I'll show you what I've got. So first of all, there's a hot press etcher sketchbook. Um, vegan friendly. So it's A5 size in the landscape format and 52 pages, which are 220 grams per square meter and 100% cotton. So I'd already bought the cold press uh, etcher pad. So I'll just show you a quick comparison of the paper. Excuse my very inky nails. So I really like it when a watercolour paper, a cold press watercolour paper, hasn't got a regular texture. Um, and so I think the texture of, of this pad's great. So the hot press pad is ever so slightly more creamy coloured than my cold press. Um, and you can see it's pretty much without texture or it's an awful lot finer. So I'm not sure whether I'll have a play with this sketchbook in this video or save that for another video. I'll see how I get on with time. And there's also this paintbrush roll. And I believe that these are um, watercolour brushes in here. I think that there's this black paintbrush roll with watercolour brushes and then a lighter coloured brush roll with gouache brushes in it. So, very smart. So it looks like there are six rounds. Um, two flats, and an angled flat, and then a fan brush, which I'm excited to try out. I've never had a fan brush before. I'll take these off and have a look at them a bit better. I don't want to mess up my lovely new Etcher sketchbook just with some random swatching. So I'll just use cellulose paper for trying out the paint brushes. I do like this roll though, that's really nice. I'm just washing off whatever the paint brushes come coated in. So this is the number 12 etch your brush. And I'm using Roman Schmalls manganese violet with it. So it comes to a nice tip. Just having a play doing whatever occurs to me, just to get the feel for it. So 
I'll try number eight now. It's a reasonably soft tip, but there's still a good level of control with it. A little while back I made a video on paintbrushes and I'd made a chart showing where all my different paintbrushes fell. On one side of the chart I'd got how much water the brush held and on the other I'd got the kind of controllability of the tip or how much snap the brush had. And just, just off the bat, without comparing anything just yet, I'd say these brushes feel like they don't hold as much water as the Squirrel and Imitation Squirrel brushes, such as the Escoda Ultimo, the Princeton Neptunes and the Silver Black Velvets, and possibly a fair bit less than the Synthetic Sable. So, for example, the Princeton Aqua Elites or the Sable Blend brushes. I'll get a couple of eights out, though, of different kinds, and give them a try and it'll be interesting to see how they compare with the other synthetic brushes that I've got. So I've just pulled out a few different number eight brushes so I would say that the softest brushes which hold the most water but have maybe a bit less control. We've got the silver black velvet starting to run out. I could have gone a little bit further. And then the Princeton Neptune. So those two are the ones that I would say hold the most water. And then I'll show you and this is a Sable Blend. This is a Series 402 from Rosemary & Co. So that starts to run out a little bit sooner than the Squirrel and Faux Squirrel. And then I've got their Princeton Aqua Elite, which is Faux Sable. And then I'm imagining that the etcher comes somewhere lower down in its ability to hold water. And then just for comparison, this is the Escoda Perla synthetic and this is a lovely detailed brush but it doesn't hold a huge amount of water and I'm I'm guessing that this is probably the brush that the etcher is closest to So it seems like the etcher brushes feel really nicely made. Um, the bristles come together really nicely. It looks like they're going to be quite a nice, more of a detailed brush for watercolour. And the other brush I'm keen to compare it to is the Betty Hayways synthetic brush. And I've just got this in a number five, but it's reasonably similar to the etcher number six. I'm just thinking they might be quite similar to each other.
So the Betty Hayways holds a little bit more water um, and has more of a, a blunter tip to it. I like the snap in the Betty Hayways. I feel like I've got it's almost like kind of colouring in with felt tips with this one. You've kind of got good control and so I'll just try this the etcher number six. It's got a very nice tip on it. And the smallest brush in the set is a number one. And I'm curious to compare this to the Proline Pro Art number one, which is my favorite uh, detail synthetic brush. So I'll just give these two a comparison. Oops. I haven't mixed the paint in very well on that. So that's the etcher number one. Yeah, so that's quite a nice little detail brush that is, the number one. And then this is the Pro, Proline Pro Art. I'd say they've got a fairly similar level of control. And the last brush comparison I wanted to do is to compare the etcher with the snap, which is a synthetic Princeton brush. It's got a, a blunter tip, but I'm just curious where they stand. I just discovered the snap not all that long ago and I've been really enjoying it. There is a nice softness to these etcher brushes. So they hold a reasonably similar amount of, the, of water. The bristles themselves seem to be a little bit softer on the snap. But they're not hugely dissimilar. It's maybe the shape of the tip that's different. So yeah, these etch watercolour brushes just seem to be very nice synthetic brushes, not holding a huge amount of water, but keeping the tip together nicely for some decent control. And then two other comparisons I'll do. This is just to show you the difference between the Princeton Neptune, which holds a lot of water. And these, so these are both half inch flats.
So yeah, as I would have thought, the Princeton Neptune flat holds a lot more water and the Etcher is behaving much more like um, a synthetic. So I've got I've got a Rosemary & Co a similar size synthetic flat. So I'll see how the two syn synthetics compare now. It's a really nice soft one though. That's really enjoyable to use. Oops, sorry, my finger's catching. So the ivory from Rosemary & Co, the bristles feel quite a bit stiffer and you can, also, you can almost see it here, you can kind of see the lines left, whereas the Etcher brush is um, quite a bit softer, though they hold a similar amount of water. And you can see by the shape that they're softer because the bristles are kind of splaying out more when I'm doing the dashes. And then I'll just quickly have a go with a fan brush. I've not tried one of these before. I guess for grasses and things. So they're going to clump together a bit when they're very wet. Yeah, that's really fun. I think I'll enjoy that in the foreground of landscapes and things. Brilliant. So I don't think I could manage this with my only watercolour set. I definitely need to have some bigger brushes which hold a lot of water, like the Princeton Neptune or Silver Black Velvets. But they look like a relatively soft, nice, long pointed synthetic. And then the last thing which I was sent It's one of these lovely little palettes designed by Stephanie Law. So they come in a metal tin. And then these are ceramic. So you've got a palette for putting paint in. And then a little mixing palette. And they're separated by these kind of stiff felt discs. Now I'd seen these around on the internet before and whilst I'm a big travel palette fan I hadn't really considered them because I didn't realise they kind of came in the little tin and were designed to be portable. So I'm quite excited about this. I think what I'm going to do now is pick out some colours to fill this with and I'll take this as my palette while I go away for Christmas and see how I get on with it. So today I'm just going to choose some colours to fill it with. So I like how the palette's divided into kind of six. So I'm wondering if I should... Uh, let's see, we've got... So I'm wondering if I should do it where I've got kind of a segment for each of the primaries, so my red, yellow, blue, purples, greens, oranges, well I'll say oranges and browns. So I could have a key one for each of those groupings and then a couple of others that I like the idea of and maybe like one, I don't know, Payne's grey or neutral tint in the middle. 
obviously I'm limited by paints that I've got in tubes. So I'll get those out now and take a look. I'm going to paint these out. I'm not going to put them in yet. I'm going to paint them out first and see if I'm happy with that selection. I do think it's a reasonably good mixing palette. It's whether it's got enough of my favourites in as well. And now I'm filling in the little watercolour paper colour chart that comes with the set. That's the set all ready to go then, and I really look forward to using it. This is the 19 well mini palette, and there is also a 37 well mini palette from Etcher, and they're both £45 from Jackson's Art. It's a beautiful quality little item, though obviously better suited to smaller paintings with smaller brushes, as you'll struggle getting a large brush into the size of the well. As ever, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.